So one of the most unfortunate realities of this battle for the soul of the gaming industry is that when you're pushing back against an ideology, it can come with several consequences. Either you're vilified by your community and subjected to an onslaught of harassment from your peers or from other developers and even executives sometimes that sit high up in their ivory towers like Microsoft and Sony, and it's difficult not to feel discouraged, especially when it seems like the world is against you and you're pushing back against something that you're not sure you have a lot of support for. And I think that's that's why it's exciting when you actually do have people in the industry who are willing to speak up about this stuff, about how nobody wants diversity, equity, and inclusiveness pushed into their video games, especially when it seems like that stuff is pushed in there in a bad-spirited way, or in a way that is meant to gaslight or bait people into being upset and ruining what could be potentially a very amazing video game. But yes, it's great to see that the CEO of the studio that made Ori and No Rest for the Wicked, which is a game that I've played, is on the side of gamers. They are not on the side of diversity, equity, and inclusiveness being pushed into everything. They're certainly not big fans of consultancy agencies either, as they recently removed somebody from their organization, and we'll touch upon that. But I'm actually a big fan of No Rest for the Wicked as a game. It's early access, it has a bunch of features, and it actually has a lot of similarities to Diablo 2, but it's more dynamic. You can actually traverse many of the obstacles in the game. There are really great RPG elements. There's supposed to be a lot more content in the future, and a lot of people want watching my videos have been looking for a game they can actually get excited about. There has been a lot of bad news down the pipeline, and I understand people's skepticism about maintaining their presence in the gaming industry, but yes, there is good news, okay? We're not alone in this fight against all of this DEI nonsense. There are people in the industry who actually care, and this is one of those examples. If you see this post from Thomas Mahler, I already know I might get myself into trouble once again by posting this, but I just replied to Maurice Weber 42 a German journalist who is affiliated with the German outlet GameStar. I do think it's especially important these days that we always remind ourselves to try to keep an open mind and try to understand even those who think differently than we do. And I agree with that. We should have a comfortable and pleasant dialogue with each other. We should try to actually have a conversation, not go protected and run away when confronted with very important facts. Here's my response to him complaining about people who are apparently fed up by woke culture. So he's taking a stance in defense of gamers who are trying to fight against woke culture. He says, I think it all makes sense, Maurice. This is basically a backlash against cancel culture and similar phenomena because everyone has had enough of that nonsense. And just so you guys can have context as to who he is talking about, this is a German journalist and he is with GameStar. And they're attacking gamers for being against woke culture. Okay, so let's continue what he says here. I'd suggest you take a more nuanced view, especially since you position yourself as a journalist, yet you often display a narrow mind minded attitude and don't seem to question what's actually going on, and that is something we should expect from a journalist. Just because you personally haven't been affected by cancel culture doesn't mean there hasn't been a lot of foolishness happening, and it's still ongoing, and it's only a matter of time before it impacts you too. I do believe that some journalists are willfully ignorant of the fact that this stuff is affecting gamers at the very core. You know, they're not personally affected because they usually get to report on all of this rage bait. He says to consider this famous statement, first they came for the social socialist and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the JEWS and I did not speak out because I was not a JEW. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Instead of allowing artists to just be artists, Hollywood and most of the game developers on the West Coast have decided that it's appropriate to use films and video games as platforms to push their own political agenda. If you argue otherwise, I would expect a journalist like you to back it up with thorough research. Now, this dude is just trashing this journalist, okay? And I think that this post of his perfectly encapsulates how gamers feel about modern day gaming journalists as well as the developers pushing things that they don't like. Things that can damage your brand, things that can ruin the very story and the fundamental core of a video game in general. But one of the biggest problems is the willful ignorance, the blatant willingness to just refute any facts that come your way and push an agenda that you probably don't even want 100% believe in, which is something that I can attest that most of these journalists are guilty of. Moreover, it's become the norm to point fingers at others, particularly at those who may think differently from us. Rather than allowing others to be different and listening to them regardless, we attack them outright. It's frankly eerily reminiscent of old Nazi tactics. And it really sucks. You know, a lot of people who are innocent and have their own opinions about the gaming industry, they're attacked for a number of reasons, either for liking a video game, just wanting to purchase a video game, 
support a game developer, Stellar Blade has been subjected to a lot of harassment because of that. People who are fans of that game have also been subjected to an onslaught of harassment. People have been called perverts. If they push back against DEI, they're called bigots, they're called racists, is phobes of all different kinds. But he goes on to say that anyone who doesn't conform is ridiculed and it's suggested they be shamed, fired, and have their careers destroyed. This has been the approach over the last few years and I know plenty of people whose careers have been devastated by trivialities and misinformation. And they continue to suffer today. You seem unaffected and thus you refuse to consider a more open perspective. I really have not seen a slam dunk of this magnitude in quite a minute. <laughs> I mean, this is insanely well put. Allow me to also play critic for a moment. At GameStar, you do the same thing. Instead of cleaning your own house, you wield the we report and earn from our articles. But beware, those guys are the real villains, narrative, just to ensure the spotlight never falls on you, aligning yourselves just so. That's something that I see a lot from Kotaku. Go figure. That's precisely why we've cut you off. We find such morally dubious practices unacceptable and refuse to support them. You lack the initiative to conduct your own journalistic investigations as it seems too much work when the next clickbait article is due the next day. The sad thing is that young journalists like yourself never knew anything else. Oh man, dude, this is just a slam dunk curb stomping, figuratively of course, of the journalistic world. The more outrage you generate, the more clicks you get, and that's how you make your living, at the expense of others, which apparently doesn't matter, as long as you're seen as the good guys. I hope in the future you will approach the world with more skepticism and openness, and truly consider both sides instead of aligning yourself with one to amplify their propaganda. <laughs> oh man, see? That's what we've all been saying. A lot of it's propaganda, most of it actually, especially when it comes to video games or politics. <laughs> it is deeply, deeply important that after everything that happened over the past couple of years, that we always question hidden agendas, always try to be loving and show understanding even to those we vehemently disagree with. Proper discourse is more important than ever and journalists need to understand their responsibilities in all this and start acting like journalists again. And I agree, people should start acting like journalists. This is an amazing post by the way. Cabrutus actually responded to this saying, yo, Mr. Thomas, don't mind these people. They are not gamers. They don't care about our hobby and our passions. The real gaming community is at your side and make sure that I'll do the best I can to promote your game and help you get the sales numbers. Yeah, but I don't think that they're going to have any trouble. I'm playing that game and I'm having loads of fun. My friends can actually attest to this and speak on my behalf because of the nights that I've been playing this and I get so immersed that they start to wonder if I'm actually okay because I keep trying to run this two-handed sword build, which is not working out by the way because you're really slow swinging the sword and no rest for the wicked and that's what the game i'm talking about that they're currently working on that's an early access but yeah i keep trying to swing that sword and i usually run giant sword builds and fantasy rpgs that i play this time around if you use a two-handed sword and you're like really slow so you have to time your attacks almost perfectly and even if you do time your attacks well and still get a hit sometimes you'll take a bunch of damage from a group of enemies before you even get your first swing off uh, so so there's a lot to calculate in this game, but it is a ton of fun. And again, the traversal is one of my most favorite things. It's a great blend of fantasy elements with horror and RPG. It's it's great. It's a great time. And honestly, I think it's worth you guys' time if you like video games in the same vein that I do, and you want to support a developer that actually cares and isn't trying to push an agenda, then this is one of those people. But if you want to see somebody who is not one of those people, take a look at the person who responded to that huge post I just read to you. And again, I know was a long post guys but if you bear with me you're gonna see some of the crazy responses that this guy got from philip weber i do remember when you were quite happy to publicly s on us a while ago so please make sure to apply these principles you ask of others for yourself as well so this is him pushing back on the ceo of ori and no rest for the wicked but who is it that's pushing back against him well this is philip weber the narrative director at cd project red okay one of the biggest developers in the market now they're not gods of course they have had a disastrous launch a while ago with cyberpunk that they're only just now fixing as of recently they just released a dlc for it but when it launched it was a disaster and they were going through it for a long time now it brings me no joy to say that the cd project narrative director is on the side of dei it really does pay me to say that since the witcher 3 is one of my favorite video games of all time cyberpunk i will safely say is not my favorite game although it has become a lot more fun than it used to be it's just a shame that this one c 
CEO has to attack another, and it's all ideology based. It's not like this guy is pressing any financial buttons or trying to ruin people's lives. He's trying to create a level playing field with his long post, which is something that these people grossly misunderstand because all that they can think about is how they're not being agreed with with their agenda pushing and ideologically driven video games. It, it sucks. You know, I don't want to trash philip weber or trash cd project red because i do think that they're a competent game developer but when they're saying these awful things to this guy you just have to say something back now of course he did get a response from the ceo of ori once again thomas Mahler. i always try to feel free to call me out whenever i'm not true to my words and i was right in the end wasn't i it's commendable that you folks turned things around and i love you folks for that he's talking about the cyberpunk launch and the updates they made for it but he says that doesn't excuse that you sold a full price game while trying to hide the fact that it was broken and untested and this is actually true this was one of the biggest reasons that this game was a disaster at launch and so many people were upset with cd project red over this in fact the investors started to dip out a little bit and they were panicking trying to gather their investors back and fix their game in a hurry and it was a crazy time and he goes on and your marketing department tried their best to cover things up and that sucks he says that is just a shady practice and should be condemned whenever it happens by the way you work in the triple a industry i think you're playing with fire by posting publicly like this you're a cog in a machine that doesn't really care about you so be careful of course he had a bunch of geniuses come out and try to attack him for responding to the cd project red narrative director this guy said here's an example of you not being true to your words and provided just some crazy screenshot that really has very little context to go on and then the and then the ceo responds to gromas who makes fun of that post he says wait we never had a developer who lived in denver lol of course gromas says developer looks really credible totally not a fabricated review amazing and this guy tries to double down saying are you going to claim all these are fake too it's a bunch of screenshots and he's like probably i don't know since this is all anonymous except for two cases in 15 years i can't remember ending any working relationships with anyone who's been at moon in a negative way we all go out of our way to ensure that everyone is well taken care of even if they might leave us during stressful times etc he also says that they have received a ton of messages over the years from people who left moon and thanked us for starting their careers bringing them financial freedom and having been a part of projects that really meant something to them these people cannot stand that this guy has receipts and facts i mean he's backing up all of his claims with the truth and they can't stand it and even the narrative director at cd project red who helms one of the biggest video game franchises ever he's coming out and he's attacking this guy for what ori is a successful video game and no rest for the wicked is on its way and people really love that game it's being received received very well on Steam, and I enjoy it myself. And I think that's what gamers want. They want to just focus on developers who are trying to bring genuine fun to the gaming space. They're not trying to push a political agenda like it says here from Grums. In case you were wondering why Phil Weber, narrative director of CD Projekt Red's Witcher and Cyberpunk is attacking Thomas Mahler for speaking out, CD Projekt Red has become woke and is pandering to ESG investors see their own video. This was a video from a while back in which they were talking about how they're pushing hardcore for a bunch of ESG stuff. They want that ESG money. What is ESG? Well, it's environmental, social, and governance. It's just a bunch of the same nonsense that they've been pushing in movies. They're trying to do it with video games, and video games are trying to follow suit with these requirements. Not helped by the fact that BlackRock and Vanguard are pushing this hardcore in the industry. Microsoft and Sony are pushing this down the pipeline, and now Nintendo is trying to do the exact same things. That's why we're getting things like Bridge. That's why we're getting more Sweet Baby Ink related products, and this is why a lot of game developers are now coming out against gamers because this is their main play and gamers aren't happy with it. They're pushing back against it. How effective this is going to be in the future can only be determined by the rate at which people refuse to buy these AAA products that are pushing this kind of stuff. And it also is helped by all of these game developers being brave and telling the truth and coming out and speaking out against this stuff. I don't think that being silent, even if you're afraid to speak about it, is the best answer. Grums does try to bring a very good point about this to light saying, I can tell you there are more studio heads, CEOs, and creative directors who are fed up with what is happening in the games industry and with game journalism. They just can't go on record. 
but they have reached out and let me know now and are taking action in their own studios. We are not alone. And as a quick recap, no rest for the wicked CEO Thomas Mahler rebukes consultant Alexander Brazy, who attempted to justify DEI hiring practices. Quote, he was fired. This guy followed through with what he believes in and he made it very publicly known. And now he's being supported by some of the biggest influential people on social media. Thomas Mahler, CEO of Moon Studios, which is developing no rest for the wicked rebuked game designer and consultant Sultan Alexander Brazy, who attempted to justify DEI hiring practices. This is from That Park Place. Make sure to give them a follow. They always do really great consolidation of what's been going on. And this was a post that responded to a previous post saying, great post. It actually says a lot about people when they call someone a diversity hire and automatically assume their merit is inferior. And this is when Alexander Brazy came out and defended that saying, yeah, it would help if people understood that effective DEI is about helping people who historically didn't have the network to get eyes onto their work have a chance due to their equal skill. The whole merit smearing is so banal, presumptuous, and out of touch with reality. Slamming gamers, man. It's always the gamer's fault. You know, us misunderstanding, grossly misunderstanding the reality of DEI and how helpful it is. And guess what happened? Thomas Mahler said this person is not affiliated with Moon Studios in any way whatsoever anymore. We contracted him for a short stint and he was fired for bringing nothing but friction into our team. Just FYI. Smoked that dude on social media. So he was causing problems for the studio and they got rid of him. And that is actually a theme I've heard consistently brought up in conversations when we're talking about consultancy agencies. When they hire these people, apparently they cause friction. They cause friction from the department developing the video game to the HR, trying to change things from within and causing a bunch of trouble, increasing the costs of the development of the game with their nonsense, trying to change things around and causing frustration. It's just, this is how they work. He says, we don't really hire consultants. So part Pardon me if I'm ignoring all your messages. I pretty much agree with what Jobs had to say about consulting, and I know I'll get some hate for this, but it is what it is. All of you game developers out there who are worried about speaking up about this, I just think that these game developers, I think that these CEOs, these studio heads, these people that apparently actually listen to gamers and are not on board with this diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff, I think that they should speak out. They should be honest and come forward. Being silent is not helping people. I mean, good men doing nothing is how the bad guys win. And that's not something that you want, especially when it comes to the gaming industry. If you are aware of what's going on in the gaming industry and you see a way to help fix it, then, then you need to take action. Be honest with yourselves, be honest with the people you're developing for, and decide what kind of audience you're going to have. Because if you sit on the fence, you're going to have a farm folk situation with people thinking that you're being disingenuous or that you're caving to the mob. Even if you come from a culture where apologizing is your forte or it's how you were raised, it's just a part of your culture to be sorry or you're part of your culture to try and make everybody happy. Unfortunately, in the States and in such a cutthroat industry as video games, you need to decide where you stand and you need to be honest about it or these people are going to rip you apart. And if it's not the people on the side who are actually trying to destroy gaming, then it's going to be the people that you should have been talking to in the first place. And that is all I've got for you guys in this video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. And hey, if you're feeling ultra spicy, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing I've got going on. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Later. Meow, meow.